Okay, my name is Blake. We're in Michigan, and over the past 90 days on eBay and Amazon, I've sold over 2,500 video games. Most of those uh, were happening in early December. I think I sold more than half in December. I know I did. I know I sold more than half in December. Uh, a lot of those were onesies, twosies, threesies, so lots of one, two, or three. One or two very large lots, and that kind of bolstered the number. Um, but I think that's pretty good. I think that most people who sell things would like to sell 2,500 of those things over the course of 90 days. I would, I got to keep this going, right? We got to keep listing stuff to make the next 90 days, uh, you know, Q1 as we, as we call it in the biz to make that hit those same numbers. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about that. And if you don't sell video games, don't worry. A lot of these rules that I talk about and the principles that I apply and just my my understanding of what I'm doing applies to your business. If you do resale, if you do any kind of e-commerce really, because selling online is selling online. There's a lot of the same principles that apply to uh, buying things and then flipping them for a profit. But first, we got to ship out 27 orders today. Sorry, 34 orders because there's some Amazon orders going out too. And uh, I'll show you the first Amazon order. Yesterday, I talked about these. <laughs> this is it. Some of these, I only sold one. Uh, the price is just being destroyed, decimated. It's a race to the bottom. A lot of that now. A lot of people trying to apply retail arbitrage habits that worked two years ago, but might not work now. So uh, these, <laughs> I don't know, I only bought 12. And... Um, I might, I might eat one. All right, so these are all the games I have to list this afternoon. Uh, and then these are a lot of the non-video games that I sold because the video games were all just, you know, basic boring stuff that pays the bills. This is a bit more interesting. So this is 20 bucks, the Biltmore Estate, just a, a hardcover book. Uh, this came out of the Hoarder buyout. Uh, same with this one right here. It's got six bucks for this. Some books, you know, like anything that I read in high school, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna want to sell just because I think they're good books. I bought this because the cover was cool and it was listed for three years, and I sold it for like ten bucks. That was uh, not the most cost-effective buy. This is a cool one: World of Warcraft soundtrack, Mists of Pandara, I think Pandaria. Why do we fight? The Canticle of Shen Zin Su. This sold for 12 bucks. The Burglar in the Closet by Lawrence Block. Did, did this guy write... Did this guy write uh, the screenplay for Psycho? Or is that a different person of a similar name? Anyways, uh, cool cover. You know, hardcover book. Again, had it listed forever and it sold for 9 bucks. This came from the Hoarder Cleanout, a book of fairies. Just some drawings of fairies. Uh, and this, I had it listed at 50 bucks for, I don't know, whenever I did that video. So maybe October. So since October. And uh, it sold in the markdown sale for about 40 bucks. And then finally, this is the first edition, but second printing of the 101 Dalmatians. Poor, well probably not poor condition, but fair condition. Not the best condition. Uh, and this sold for $45, but I think I took the best offer of 35 Man, I can not get away from these poopy pants buyers. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. They're just in a bad mood. Something's going on. So I had another negative feedback yesterday, last night. Uh, my feedback score went back down to 99.9%. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up is not, it's not really, I'm not going to make a big deal about it. You know, whatever. Even the videos last time, it's all in good fun, okay? And I get it. I get it. You guys, you gotta, you gotta get on the same level with me. So this is what happened. I sold them a video game, and it was packaged like this. You see that? That's just a game in a poly bag. And uh, I do this for all my games. If they're sealed, I'll put some protective coating, you know, either a bag or, or some paper over the plastic. If they're really expensive. I'll put them in a box. Uh, if they're like games with a lot of um, open space, like a cartridge game, I'll put some void filler 
into the the actual plastic case. Uh, and if it's like a jewel case for a CD, then I'll, I'll do some other wrapping that way. But that's the way I do it. That's how I've done it. Uh, and you know how many broken games I've sold? Zero. None. It doesn't happen. They don't break. Right? First class mail is not handled the same way media mail or ground is handled, okay? They're handled differently. Uh, and so when I send someone a video game like this, first class mail... I know that it's going to get there safe. And so this buyer gets it, right? They get it on time. They were sending me messages on uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, like, why aren't you shipping it out today? And I said, well, it's a federal holiday. And he goes, no, it's not. And I said, oh, yes, it is. You can look it up. Uh, no, nothing. I mailed it on the next day. It arrives, and I get feedback yesterday. Uh, and the feedback, I'm going to paraphrase because... <laughs> it's hard to exactly remember stupidity sometimes. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase. And so he goes, everything arrived as advertised, which that sounds like should be good feedback. But, <laughs> but seller only shipped it in a plastic bag as if I went down to Kroger and got a grocery bag there. No, it's a poly bag. It's, this is made for shipping things out. Uh, <laughs> and says, it could have been damaged. Very disappointed. Uh, well, it wasn't damaged. And um, if it was damaged, you could have returned it. But it wasn't damaged. And I get you're saying, well, what if it was? What if it was, right? Here's the kicker on top of all that. I mean, of course, it got removed immediately. You can't just say absurd things like that. But here's the kicker. Uh, guess how much the game cost? Just guess. Have you guessed? One cent plus shipping. I sold the game on auction. It sold for one cent plus shipping. And so I think this guy was just a little mad. You know, he didn't actually want it. He saw the one penny auction, got on tilt, hit that bid button, and uh, now he's mad he's out, you know, five bucks. Um, that's, that's the argument against selling cheap stuff. You sell cheap stuff. You're really going to attract uh, some shitheads. That's just the way it goes. All right, there's the orders going out. Uh, not much else to report on really, today. I'm just doing the same stuff, fixing discs, listing discs. Uh, we can talk about, well, I'm going to go to the post office, and then we'll talk about the big things I've learned. Because, again, I, I said, does this only apply to video game resellers? No, absolutely not. The, the idea of um, understanding why people are buying things and then being able to maximize the value to them and in turn to yourself as a business person, you know, that's, uh, that's universally applicable. Serve me right for talking about a book before I actually shipped it out. As soon as I posted the, uh, <laughs> or as soon as I filmed the clip saying, oh, I, you know, I'll sell these cheap books because I read them in high school and I care about the existence of literature. Uh, the guy messages me and goes, oh, sorry, I don't want it anymore. It took too long to ship. It's been a day. Here's a disc that I put in that refinisher for about 12 minutes. Man, the back of it was so scratched up. It looked like it had just been dragged across the pavement for a half mile. And look at it now. So we have this right here. That's the only thing I'm worried about. But in a lot of these PlayStation 2 discs, the data does not go to the edge of the disc because they're only you know, a gigabyte or however big they are, the games, uh, because those older systems couldn't handle a 190 gigabyte game like we have now on the Xbox One. So is this little blemish going to screw up this disc? You know, if it doesn't, it'll sell for about 75 bucks, I think. And if it does screw it up, I can auction the disc off at, by itself as non-working, and then I'll probably get about 15 or 20 bucks for the case with manual. Because sometimes you got to piece stuff out when, uh, when, when things don't go as planned. Okay, now the fun part. Let's talk about all the things that I've learned selling all these video games and how they can apply to your business. Maybe you sell uh, Halloween blow-up decorations. Maybe you sell used books. Maybe you sell clothing. Maybe you sell art. Maybe you sell tools. Maybe you sell anything. Whatever it is, if you plan on scaling this up, meaning you want to have a thousand plus a month sales of any individual item, 
most likely, uh, and assuming they're all unique items, you know, spoiler alert, that's one of the benefits of quantity listings. But assuming you want to go into something where you're purchasing multiple different SKUs, so an auction of 500 different video games, uh, a collection of, of vintage postcards where they're all different. Assuming you want to go into something like that, what you want to do is have a, a base estimate of what you can purchase for any item when in quantity, you know, the law of averages or however you want to describe it will make that profitable. So I know if I pay a buck 50 for a random distribution of Wii games, and I'm not saying the junkers, because if someone makes it all junkers, that's different, but a random distribution as you would find with someone's personal collection, with a video game store going out of business, with someone who does storage unit cleanouts. Uh, if I pay a buck 50, there is absolutely no way I'm not going to make considerable profit within two or three weeks. Um, now, part of that is because video games have uh, a liquidity to them. And I don't mean that in like the technical sense that a lot of finance guys might say, but I mean, it's easy to make, the, to make it turn into cash. It's very easy to take video games and make them cash. They can be Sega Genesis games, they can be Nintendo Wii games, they can be PS5 games, they can be any kind of game really. And uh, because they're so popular, and because the market is going up, and because there are so many people who like to sell them, you can auction them off on eBay, you can put a bulk listing on Facebook Marketplace, and within a week, and this week, I mean, I'm saying the longest you have to wait is a week, because that's how long the auction might run, um, and then I, okay, two days for payment processing, but you know, within, within 10 days, you can go from 25,000 Wii games to cash. Now, uh, 25,000 is quite a bit, Maybe I shouldn't have gone that high, but you get what I'm saying, where like, it's not uncommon to see someone sell a thousand video games for, you know, one to two thousand dollars on eBay. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's, it's not uncommon. So I've learned that that's really extremely important. Maybe learn is the wrong word. It's re, it's re uh, established the, the pr supremacy of that, of that principle. That's why I love selling sterling silver jewelry. Uh, because sterling silver jewelry can be melted down into silver and you can sell that to anybody in the world. I mean, obviously, <laughs> it's, the physical uh, transaction is different. But you get what I'm saying, is if you can figure out a way to turn the item you want to sell a bunch of into some kind of commodity, that's the right word, some kind of commodity, uh, then that makes your acquisition process so much simpler. Second thing is you really want to be aware of the buying patterns of people in your niche. So if you're a painter, or you sell art, or you sell prints, uh, or you sell comic books, or whatever it is, it doesn't, what you sell doesn't matter. I hope that really, if you're watching this, it doesn't matter what you sell, what you want to sell, you're taking away what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter what you sell, if there are a lot of people who want it, just due to the chaotic nature of human beings, trends will emerge. Patterns will emerge. Uh, if you sell a bunch of paintings, maybe frames is a good thing to add on because there's a pattern of buyers buying paintings and frames. It's very easy for video games because video games come in series, they come in genres, they come in topics. So I can sell uh, 15 football games together. I can sell uh, insert title one, two, three, four, and five, like Just Dance is a, is a title. So I can sell Just Dance one, two, three, four, and five together as a bundle because uh, the buyers who buy one are interested in two. The buyers who buy one and two want three. The buyers who buy, you know, you, you can cut it up a thousand ways, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you can say, okay, I have all of these rough commodities. All these video games that even if they're not good buys, I can easily convert them into cash and reinvest that. After I've done that, after you've found your item that you can easily purchase, easily convert back into cash, and maybe there's going to be some kind of um, money lost in the conversion if it's a really bad buy, but you're not going broke. You're not spending $10,000 on encyclopedias that you got to use to, you know, you got to end up turning them into 
kindling <laughs> because nobody wants to buy them. Uh, once you've done that, you can begin to organize and sort the commodities you have, the goods you have, there's the units you have, the video games you have, whatever it is. You can uh, identify patterns in buyer behavior. Maybe it's they only buy these things together. Maybe it's here's a good add-on for this. Maybe buyers who buy this are more prone to come back in two weeks and buy something else. Once you have uh, understood those patterns, then you can begin experimenting and begin tweaking the data. So again, with me, it's video games, depending on the console, depending on the condition, depending on how, you know, I do do a basic eye test where if it's all like extremely low value games, that means obviously someone picked through them. But uh, once I've established that it's a, a generally or, or, or roughly random assortment of all the possible titles, uh, I know that I can pay certain amounts, again, based on console, based on condition. Uh, now, once I have that, I, and I know that I can easily turn them back into cash, that's when I can do the experimentation with different bundles, um, with different, even just like taking the disc out of the case and selling the case. That's a good way to increase your, your profit on uh, an individual acquisition by 5 or 10%. Things like that. So maybe it's you're buying suits, whole suits, like a, 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 a three-piece suit, and taking them apart and selling them individually. I'm not saying that's going to make you more money. I'm just saying, like, thinking of things that way is how you can take this information and apply it to your own business. Two general ideas. I mean, I could go on more and more, but how about you just ask me questions if you're curious. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up, uh, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.